So the invitation is to be very kind to yourself, to be very tender towards yourself. to listen to yourself from openness we are not often kind and tender towards ourselves at the deepest level we may think we are in certain ways, in certain aspects of our lives, in certain relationships to our different parts of ourselves. But if you examine that with honesty, there's probably somewhere where we are not acting or listening with the utmost loving tenderness and by that I mean openness to listen to hear to taste and feel and touch that which really arises in you in response to the ebb and flow of your life, your circumstances, your thinking, your emotions, the dynamics of your psyche, as all these rise and fall and different parts come into view at different times, To be with that, to be with what arises in the utmost tenderness and openness and vulnerability. That means to not judge, to not attempt to control, to not attempt to fix or not even to attempt to provide an answer yeah. it's a subtle inner dimension of being that is love you may not like what arises you may not like what is felt But that's really the art of spiritual inquiry. It's not to get an answer, either from me or from yourself or any other spiritual teacher or teaching. It's not about answers. It's not about finding the way to get through something or to fix something or to get rid of the pain or to get rid of the suffering or to find freedom or to arrive at some elevated destination where somehow life becomes miraculously perfect and you become miraculously perfect and pain is never felt again and nothing uncomfortable or unwanted arises ever again. It's not an answer. So don't listen, don't look for an answer, not even within yourself, just listen. Which means just be open, just allow yourself 
So you, you only have two choices. To open or to close. You have the choice to meet what is here without any boundary, without any limit. You have that capacity, you have that choice. It's a relaxation of all attempts, of all strategies, of all mental and emotional acrobatics. It's a relaxation of all of that. And when that relaxes, then what is here as the naked The nakedness of this, the nakedness of this, the nakedness of this, that's always unfolding and revealing itself, becomes your, your abiding home. So it's not like you arrive somewhere. It's not like you have a momentous, discovery, although that may happen along the way, but it's not that something happens and then you arrive on the other side of the fence at something that is so desired, <laughs> an awakened state, an enlightened state, a free state. It's not that you suddenly get the answer it's that you relax into this and this and this, whatever is here, whatever shows itself, whatever energy is your experience, whatever is revealing itself is your experience. And the more you relax and the more you open, the more you allow and the more you not judge, the more you do not resist, the more you do not turn away from, then that which is already here as your natural state and the natural state of existence simply becomes ever-present. Because what stands in the way of it starts to fall away. It's very natural. Awakening is very natural. It's strange to call it awakening because it sounds like something happens. But in some ways nothing happens. just finally let go. You finally let go of contorting yourself around your experience in order to make yourself feel safer or more comfortable or to uphold some kind of image. Or to protect finally let go. And that letting go is very vulnerable. It's a vulnerable space. Because the mind, the habitual mind, scrambles to hold on to what it knows. Whether what it knows is something helpful, useful, or whether what it knows is something harmful or detrimental. It still scrambles to hold on to what it knows. And this is about not knowing. Letting go is not knowing. And I'm not talking about intellectual not knowing. Just an inner, 
from the deepest recesses of your being, not knowing this moment, not attempting to define this moment. And I spoke last week at the conference about the, 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 the wound of unworthiness. And in that, I described some of my experience. And I've had a lot of questions since then. People emailing and asking, can you point me the way to that? So I spoke about falling into the abyss of being. I spoke about meeting existential aloneness, which is the core wound of separation. And the liberation that comes when we meet that all the way. But if you were at that talk and if that spoke to you, and this relates to any experience, not just that, I'm going to say again, there is no way, <laughs> yeah, there is no way. You cannot make it happen. You cannot say, well, if I do this, if I meet this, if I go here within myself to this place that's so scary, then somehow I will jump over the fence and I will have arrived. What I'm saying is, that's a big agenda that creates a contraction itself. There's no vulnerability in that because you are having an imagination of where it will take you. And as long as that imagination is held onto, then there really is no transformation of consciousness. Because this isn't about understanding it or doing it or knowing it. It's about letting go of all of that. Letting go of all of that. So every moment, every moment offers that opportunity. And so the path, if there is a path, is to be ongoing yeah, with yourself in your capacity to choose openness now, openness now, openness now, to notice where there is any subtle, pull away or contraction to the full depth of that which reveals itself. Even the resistance can be met with openness or met from openness. Even the resistance, it's about really allowing yourself to taste it. Yeah? To feel the texture of it. To not shy away from it. To not know where it will take you or what will happen. And when suffering is not wanted, where whatever form that suffering comes in, yeah. whether it's physical pain or psychological pain or whichever challenge arises for you that is part of your particular makeup, your particular story, that's the time to get really close to it. That's the time to just enjoy its texture. That's not the time to say, well, if I was awakened, 
then I wouldn't be feeling this suffering. Therefore, I'm going to find out how to awaken or how to stay in an awakened state. That's not the time. Wrong inquiry. Yeah? Wrong question and wrong answer. Yeah. That's the time to say welcome. That's the time to say welcome to this. This that appears, this pain, this contraction, this resistance, this suffering, this contortion, this that feels so much as if it's in opposition to the freedom that I really want. No, it's not. It's here because here is the opportunity to really get close to it. To really get intimate with it. Not through the mind, not to understand it. You know the stories, you know why it's here, you know what happened in the past, you know your conditioning, you know the circumstances you don't like. N none of that. Yeah? Get close to it from the inside. <laughs> yeah, from the inside of the inside. From the depths from the depths that has no name, from the depths that has no understanding, from the depths that has no strategy or mechanism or process. Yeah? And only you have the capacity or the choice to be willing for that. To say yes to that. It's really the art of surrender. And it has ever deeper dimensions to it, ever more subtle dimensions to it. So wherever you are, whatever is happening or not happening, Whatever your experience, whatever your understanding or revelations or insights, there's still more. There's still more because it never ends, because life never ends, because the appearance of life never ends. 